Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm taking a look at another popular belief held amongst fitness influencers, which is the idea that muscle soreness is a good indicator of how much muscle damage you've caused and by extension, how effective your workout was for building muscle. Now I'm sure you've heard people say, if you're not sore, then you didn't train hard enough. But is that really true? A classic study by Nasaka and colleagues back in 2002 set out to test whether delayed onset muscle soreness, or DOMS as it's often referred to, actually reflects the magnitude of muscle damage. Now, their findings might change the way you think about soreness and progress. Delayed onset muscle soreness, or DOMS, usually appears 24 to 48 hours after unaccustomed exercise, particularly when eccentric muscle contractions are involved. Now, for those that don't know, an eccentric contraction is when the muscle lengthens under load, like lowering a barbell during a Romanian deadlift. Now, for years, muscle soreness was thought to directly indicate muscle damage, with more muscle soreness meaning more damage and potentially more growth. But not all evidence lines up with this idea. Nasaka and colleagues designed an experiment to directly test whether soreness correlates with other well-established markers of muscle damage. Now before we dive into the study, let's quickly review what muscle damage actually looks like and how it's measured. Researchers don't just rely on one metric like muscle soreness, instead they use several indirect markers. These include delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS, which peaks 24 to 40 48 hours after exercise. Decreased force production is another key indicator, meaning your muscle can't generate as much strength as before. Decreased range of motion also signals muscle damage, which is often felt as stiffness in the trained muscle. Swelling of the exercised limb measured as increases in circumference and increased muscle proteins in the blood, like creatine kinase, which will leak out of damaged muscle fibers. Now among these, the most reliable marker of true muscle damage is sustained decreases in force production. Research has shown that force loss is strongly correlated with actual myofibular disruption inside the muscle, making it the best available indicator. Most studies include several indirect markers to help detect and confirm the presence of muscle damage. With that in mind, let's look at this study by Nasaka and colleagues from 2002, which asked a very simple but highly important question, and that is, does soreness really reflect the magnitude of muscle damage? So let's take a look at the methods. What did the authors do? The researchers pulled data from 110 healthy male university students who were not resistance trained. Participants were assigned to perform either 12 or 24 maximal eccentric contractions of the bicep on a custom arm curl machine. Each rep started with a one second maximal isometric hold at 90 degrees of elbow flexion, followed by the investigator extending the elbow over a three second time period, while the subject resisted with as much force as possible. In addition to this, a subset of the 12 rep group returned about a year later and performed 60 maximal eccentric contractions, providing an even higher volume comparison. To track muscle damage, researchers measured multiple markers before exercise, immediately after and after four days of recovery. These measures included muscle soreness rated on a visual scale during palpation, flexion and extension, maximal isometric force at 90 degrees to capture strength loss, range of motion to assess stiffness, upper arm circumference to track swelling, and plasma creatine kinase or CK levels in the blood samples. This setup allowed the team to compare soreness against other indirect measures of muscle damage across different exercise volumes. So let's take a look at the results. What did the authors find? After both the 12 and 24 eccentric contraction protocols, participants showed clear signs of muscle damage. Strength dropped by about 40 or 50% immediately after exercise and stayed depressed for several days. Range of motion decreased, swelling increased, and CK levels spiked, although the plasma creatine kinase response varied greatly between individuals. And lastly, muscle soreness developed gradually, peaking around one or two days later. Now, when comparing 12 to 24 repetitions, the higher volume condition generally produced greater and longer lasting strength loss, swelling and CK elevations. But the amount of soreness did not scale consistently with these markers. For example, participants with the greatest soreness did not necessarily have the largest drops in strength or the highest creatine kinase responses. When looking at the relationship between soreness and other indirect markers of muscle damage, the correlation analysis confirmed that soreness scores were weakly 
directly or not significantly correlated with other muscle damage indicators like force loss, CK activity, swelling or range of motion. Strength loss is generally considered the most consistent and reliable marker of muscle damage. While this study did not directly measure myofibrillar disruption, prior work shows that sustained reductions in force output align closely with structural damage at the myofibril level. In this study, there was no significant correlation between isometric strength and soreness, meaning there was no clear pattern to suggest that individuals who had greater decreases in force production also had higher levels of soreness. Now in the 60 rep trial, which was conducted one year later, as one might have predicted, muscle damage was much more severe overall, but the same pattern emerged. Soreness increased, yet it failed to track with the other indirect measures of damage. So let's talk about these findings. This study showed that soreness may not be the most reliable indicator of true muscle damage. In fact, many athletes and even coaches assume that the more soreness they have, the more damage and, by extension, better results from their training. But what Nasaka and colleagues showed is that soreness often tells a very different story from what's actually happening inside our muscle. When these participants performed eccentric arm curls, they experienced all the typical markers of damage – strength loss, swelling, reduced range of motion, and elevated CK levels. Yet, the amount of soreness people reported didn't consistently line up with those other markers. Some individuals with very high scores had relatively modest losses in strength, while others who lost a great deal of strength reported only mild soreness. This weak correlation means that soreness on its own cannot be trusted to reflect the true magnitude of muscle damage. Instead, the best marker is sustained strength loss. Importantly, this matches what we know from other studies that directly examine muscle muscle ultrastructure, and that is when myofibrils are disrupted, the muscle's ability to generate force is compromised for days, even if soreness subsides. Now, although some soreness may be related to muscle damage, things such as inflammation, connective tissue strain, fluid shifts, and other factors likely also contribute. This helps explain why soreness does not always match the actual extent of structural disruption. Another critical point is that muscle damage itself does not determine muscle growth. While eccentric contractions are known to provide a powerful growth stimulus, the degree of damage is not proportional to hypertrophy. In fact, research shows that muscles can adapt and grow with progressively less damage over time. In other words, you don't need soreness or extreme damage to continue growing, and in some cases, too much damage can actually slow progress by interfering with training frequency and recovery. So what does this all mean? Well, this study highlights that muscle soreness and muscle damage are not interchangeable. Soreness doesn't reliably reflect the extent of muscle disruption, and it certainly doesn't guarantee greater training adaptations. Most importantly, neither soreness nor damage dictates the magnitude of hypertrophy. Muscle growth comes from the long-term balance between protein synthesis and protein breakdown, supported by well-structured training, nutrition, and recovery. Damage may occur, especially early on, but it's not the most important thing for growth. So next time you wake up sore, don't just assume it means bigger gains are on the way. Soreness is just one piece of the puzzle, and it may not be the most important one. Judge your training by your progress, which would ideally be done through direct measures of muscle growth, like B-mode ultrasound or MRI. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching today's video. If this helped clear up the myths around muscle soreness, please give it a like, share it with a training buddy, and please subscribe to my channel for more science-based insights around training. And if you've enjoyed this video and want to learn more, I'd love for you to join my community. As a research enthusiast, dietitian, and coach, I share first-hand access to new research, practical insights on nutrition, recipes, and evidence-based training tools. You can subscribe to my free newsletter, or if you're ready to take things one step further, ask about one-on-one -on -one coaching or check out my training programs. They're only $12.99 and built on real science not high. All the links are available in the description below and thank you for supporting evidence-based fitness content.